Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Alicia and I am the mom of three small children. Lydia is five, Eliza is three, and Mary Jo is eight months. Today, I want to talk to you about how I train my children to be independent in the kitchen. About this time last year, I was around six months pregnant and I knew that I would soon have more children than I had hands. I knew that I needed to train my oldest two to be a little bit more independent. Now, at the time, they were two and a half and four, so obviously there's not gonna be 100% independence there, but I wanted them to be a little bit more um, what I call supervised independence. And I didn't do it all right away. It took about six months, to, well, about a year, I guess, to get to where we are now. I took a step back and just kind of observed, okay, what can I hand off to these children that they can do on their own? So some of it is things that they do on their own for themselves. Other things are helping me out just for future training to where they can do things more independently on their own in the future. The end goal for me is for my children to be able to make their own lunches and their own breakfasts in the future. Maybe when they're six or seven or and older, they'll be able to get up, get dressed, make their bed, may eat breakfast and be ready for the school day. Um, by a particular time. I think that being independent in any area of life can create confidence in a child and that spills over into other areas of their life. And it also creates certain skills that can flow over to other areas and it helps create common sense in a lot of ways. It also frees up the parent to do other things while they're supervising that child or while that child is doing what they've been trained to do. So the first tip that I would have is just to watch your child and see what they are capable of doing by themselves. What can you hand off to your child that you no longer need to do for them? I'm gonna share with you a few ways that I've done that. First, I'm gonna tell you my philosophy behind the whole training. I like to see what I can do, what I can hand over to them, and then I think of ways to train them to do it. and. Usually they kind of figure it out for themselves pretty quickly if I put them in that situation. And once the child can demonstrate that they know how to do it the right way, I'll usually just take a step back and keep an eye on them. If I need to step in and correct them, I will. But generally they can take it on for themselves. So one thing that my children do, and they've done this since my oldest was probably 15 to 18 months old, I gave them a cabinet all their own. That's where their dishes go and they put their dishes away when I'm cleaning out the dishwasher. So when they're really, really little, I'll give them their plates and say, okay, where does your, this plate go? Where does this bowl go? And they put those away. Um, as time has gone on, I've given that to one child specifically while the other one may do other housework. But, those, but when my children put their own dishes away, it gives them a sense of responsibility. And I think having that from a young age is a really, really good thing because then you can just build on that responsibility in other areas of their life. It also gives children a sense of order and maintaining their, their things, not just throwing them in a cabinet or letting someone else do their work for them, taking care of their things for them. When my children are walking and able to stand on a stool and reach the silverware drawer, I will hand them sil uh, forks and spoons from the dishwasher and let them put those in the drawer. Now, when my oldest was little, she just wanted to help. She didn't care if it was orderly or not. She would just take the spoons and the forks out of the dishwasher rack and she would just, <laughs> she couldn't even reach the, um, the drawer, she would just, or well, she could reach it, but she couldn't see and she would just go and drop them in, come back and get more and then go drop them in. And then later I would have to go back and sort them. But as time went on, um, I would get a stool and put it up and she didn't sort them right, right away. She would still just pick them up, step on the stool and drop them in. And my second did this as well. And I would have to go back later and sort them. But over time I'd be like, okay, where does this baby spoon sleep? Where does this mommy spoon sleep? Where does the baby fork sleep? Oh, okay, yeah, he sleeps right there. And so I make it a fun little game for them. But as they're learning that sorting, um, that's one of the activities they say that small children should be learning. So right there, you have a hands-on free application for teaching your children sorting. They're learning the real life application of sorting 
and it's completely free and you're getting housework done. And over time, they're able to do that on their own. They don't, you don't need to come up with any games or buy any fancy, you don't have to buy anything. It's right there and you're gonna do it anyway. And you're building memories with your children and spending time with them. The other way I do things is I have what I call mommy's helper. And each child has their own day of the week that they are my helper. I'll call them into the kitchen while I'm making breakfast or lunch and sometimes dinner. Usually during dinner they're playing so I don't bother them, but definitely breakfast and lunch and that child will set the table or they will put the cereal out or they may get the peanut butter or the condiments out. Um, some days they will cook something in the microwave, which I'll get to in just a minute, but generally they will help me. and. Through that getting things out they kind of under they start to understand the flow of how the kitchen works they understand where everything goes and how to get it out and when we need to get it and what it's used for i also do that for kitchen utensils mommy get mommy the black spatula under the stove or get mommy this pot out or what have you they under it starts teaching children the flow of the kitchen and it alleviates my burden because i can focus on what i'm doing on at the counter while they're running around getting all this other stuff out and it's training them and freeing up time for me to get stuff done uh, that i need to to get that meal ready I mentioned this briefly just a few minutes ago, but I'm gonna get into more detail. The other way that I teach my children to be independent is setting the table. For example, my children, one of the children will grab all the bowls and the pitchers, the spoons, they'll take out the milk, the cereal, anything that needs to be out and they will do that. I also bought them these containers. They're small little containers that I put the cereal in and they can get the scoop and scoop their own breakfast cereal they don't need me to do it and then I bought these little pitchers they're the ones that um, a coffee shop would use to mix up to steam milk and I just pour the milk in there and they're child size so the children can just pour their own milk as well again a good skill that they're learning is scooping and pouring so they're learning scooping and pouring and it's a real life application i didn't have to do anything special or make anything special for them to do it you most certainly could do that but i kind of just like doing things in the moment for real life and this is really helpful for that another way that you can teach independence is to use the toaster um, twice a week we do toast and we do bagels that way my kids can just get what they need they usually will make one or two pieces and then eat it so they can put it in they can push a little thing down and when it comes out they can get their own stuff um, their own food and i just keep an eye on them while i'm making eggs or setting the baby up with her breakfast whatever i'm doing and my kids can just come in after they've gotten dressed and made their beds that's uh been really helpful for me to say the least since i have to make all this breakfast for everybody else of course i am keeping an eye on my children as I'm doing it and sometimes I do have to go back and correct him like okay we don't press the button and we don't hold we don't hold the little switch down but other than that they know what to do and a few corrections and they're able to do that on their own the other thing you can do is teach your kids to use the microwave now my children do not use the microwave by themselves they know that they can only do it with the grown-up uh, my second child Eliza will use it on I think Thursdays to make chicken nuggets. Uh, I'll get the chicken nuggets out for her. She'll count out eight and then she'll put it in the microwave and put it on for one minute. She flips them over and then she closes the microwave and puts them on for another minute. And then she gets them out and takes it to the table and then they each get their own chicken nuggets uh, as they're ready for them. But I am standing over her because the microwave is one of those, I feel a little bit more dangerous because um, some, you know, if they put a metal fork in or something, it's a bad idea. So I do watch them more closely than I do with the toaster, but they do enjoy learning to do that by themselves. On Fridays, my oldest child will do hot dogs on her own and she knows just 30 seconds and after probably three or four times she figured it out on her own and she just does it automatically now the last the next thing i want to talk about is allowing your child to stand over the stove on a stool and stir something usually i'll allow my children to stir soup or to melt something like butter or chocolate or even if I'm sauteing onions, I'll, I'll let them do that. Now when I do this, I keep it on low because I don't want it to cook really fast. 
and um, I don't want them to burn themselves, which they know not to get too close. They, they're really good about holding the handle and stirring very slowly, and I do keep a very close, I'm usually right beside them, either cutting something up or maybe cooking something on another burner, but I don't walk away from them when they're doing that because it is a little bit more dangerous. But this is something that you as a parent have to decide if you are comfortable with. I am comfortable, I've trained my children, they know what to expect and so I don't worry about it um, because I am right there with them. And the last thing that I think is really cool and my kids love this, I've been doing this since my oldest was about two and a half, but you could probably do it when they're younger too, is letting your kids chop vegetables. Now, I don't use um, a, a regular knife. I'm probably gonna wait till my kids are much older. I don't know what age, but much older uh, before I let them use real knives. But I found these knives at a thrift store these are they're solid plastic and they are sharp i don't i mean you would really have to try to cut yourself with these but um i do teach my children knife safety and if they do not if they are not using these as you would a real knife i give them a warning and then i take them away because i want my children to have a very healthy respect for knives. Um, a few weeks ago, one of my children was playing with the knife and dropped it on her foot and sliced uh, the webbing of one of her toes. Now, thankfully, it just was a very minor cut. We did go to the emergency room and they put some pressure on it and once they did, it stopped bleeding and that was all it was, but um, she could have sliced her toe off. So, um, again, I'm training my children to, oh, and she picked that knife up by herself, by the way. She wasn't using it to cut anything. She was just like, what's this? And that's when that happened. But these knives are great. Uh, they can pretty much chop any vegetable. Things like carrots um, are a little harder if they're really thick. Um, and if you do things like potatoes, like the harder vegetables, you have to, I cut them into smaller pieces for them to cut, maybe thin slices. Or, um, but if you're using onions, onion soft things like onions or garlic are a little bit easier for them to chop. Um, with these knives. You just kind of have to gauge it based on the child, I think, and the vegetable. And then I just use small cutting boards like this for them to be able to cut on. So I'm gonna go to some footage that I shot of my girls this past week cooking their own breakfast and helping me out in the kitchen and at the table. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go ahead and end it here and um, that way you can just kind of cruise on through the footage of the girls being independent in the kitchen. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.